if you're like me and you wonder who the heck would buy government debt, would loan, in other words, loan the government money when they're 32, 33, $34 trillion in debt this year. Um, you're not alone. I've been wondering that for years. Like, who keeps lending the government money? And what's important to understand when it comes to the government bond market is no one's really holding these treasuries, like 30-year bonds, when they buy them from the government or loan the government money for 30 years. They're trading in and out of it. A lot of insurance companies hold it for their actuarial tables. There's a lot going on there, but very few, unless it's pension funds, are buying it like mom and pops are buying 30-year treasury today. The reason being is we keep adding to the debt. Just like if I, you were to loan me money and uh, I came to collect and they're like, hey, can you give me another loan so I can pay you back? It doesn't make any sense. And finally, you know, something I've been noticing for the last two years, the market has started to wake up because a lot of people buy treasuries. Keep in mind, when the interest rates goes down, you have a high yielding bond. Let's say you bought a 30-year bond at 5% interest rate for 30 years, and the Fed has to drop interest rates. Your The price of that bond just went up. So if you wanted to sell that, because all the other bonds are yielding less, if they were to go to the treasury and buy a bond today, they're yielding less, you get a premium for your 5% yielding bond. And that's what people are playing. They're starting to realize maybe the Fed isn't going to drop rates. Hmm. And maybe the government is never, ever, ever going to stop borrowing more and more and more. And Joe Brown from Heresy Financial pointed this out on his Twitter slash X account. And uh, I found this to be interesting. So the government, when they want to borrow more money, they go, uh, <laughs> they have a treasury auction. And that auction is, hey, we're going to sell different duration of debt and whoever wants to buy them. And if there's not a lot of people who want to buy them, the way the government incentivizes buying is by raising that interest rate, which is a bad sign for somebody who's $34 trillion in debt because you got to pay higher interest on that debt, right? So uh, he said on Twitter, 30-year auction on, the, on Thursday was part of the government's $112 billion in debt sale. What a bargain. The Treasury auction of 30-year bonds on Thursday went about as badly as it could. Not good. At, as the auction for the government debt that matures in 30 years, investors were awarded, awarded a 4.769 in yield or 0.051 percentage points higher than the yield in pre-auction. In other words, the government had to incentivize them to buy. They said, okay, here's here's what the market is saying that 30-year uh, yield should be. Um, so they go to the auction and <laughs> people who are buying is like, nah, we want more. We want more money. So the government had to entice investors with a premium over the market to buy their debt. So I try... I try to tell people, and kind of the goal, as I've said many times on this channel, and the goal for me is to understand the financial system. You don't need to understand all the weeds of it, but you do need to understand this. The government will never stop printing. And now the free market, the bond market, is not wanting to get, to loan them money. They will always loan the government money at the right price, at the right interest rate. So if the free market doesn't want to loan the government money, they have to raise that interest rate. What's the problem with that? When they raise the interest rate to incentivize people to buy their debt, they go insolvent. There's a point, and that's coming faster than you might think, where every single tax dollar that the government collects has to go to interest only. Interest only on the debt. So how do they get out of this? Well, they're probably going to do what Japan did which is, hey, we, we want to keep taking on more debt, but the market uh, doesn't want to buy it at one or half a percent. They don't want to, uh, to yield a negative yield, meaning inflation's at 10 and your bond uh, is yielding 0.5. They don't want to do that. So how are we going to get people to buy uh, these 
how are we going to force them to buy this? Well, we can do uh, financial repression saying you have to own, if you're a pension fund, you have to own a certain amount of bonds in your pension fund. Or we can do what Japan's doing, which is yield curve control, which is Fed prints money. They go to the Treasury. Treasury says, we want to borrow $79 trillion. Fed says, no problem. And since the market would never loan them $79 trillion, the Fed prints it and buys up all that debt. And so the government only has to pay them like a half a percentage point yield or one percentage point yield. <laughs> and as people start to understand this, you go, that can't be the way the system works. At least that was me. You know, as you read about fractional reserve lending and you read about how the government continues to borrow money, you're like, that can't be how that works. Yeah, it is. That's the sad part. Yeah, it is. And so what you should ask yourself is, what I ask myself every day when it comes to investing is, will this ever stop until it breaks, until it completely implodes, will it ever stop? What has history told us? No, it won't. This is why I'm a big fan of Bitcoin. I'm a big fan of things that the government can't print. More importantly, things the government can't control. Right? That's why I'm a big fan of Bitcoin. But um, let me know what you think. When do you think this debt death spiral, which we're in, is going to reach a crescendo, right? When is it going to be where there is systemic risk, which there already has been, but they keep putting band-aids in it uh, on the, on the financial system, like the bank term funding program and all that. But when do you think they run out of bullets, run out of financial bullets? I think that's coming in 2024. And um, I think that's going to happen because of tax receipts going way down and spending from the government going way up. So income going down as expenses are going up. It's a recipe for disaster, in my opinion. That's when the Fed has to step in, lower interest rates, and more than likely do something called quantitative easing, which you probably heard, or yield curve control. And quantitative easing is just yield curve control light. Okay. All right. Let me know what you think in the comments below. See you all in the next one. Peace.